Okay, so in this episode, what we're going to do is go through some of the processing I do to create some of my vivid HDR landscape and automobile shots. So I'm at my buddy's house, and I've got some free time. So with my laptop and my new Minnow flip phone camera, we're going to go through some of the processing I use and see if I can't duplicate some of my earlier success. Okay, now that I'm dizzy, let's put this guy in front of my uh, laptop there. You might notice that photo from my buddy Jeff Engel. Anyway, so I got the photos from before, right? It was the nine shots bracketed of the Ford uh, truck, whatever that was. So I'm going to go into Photomatics, into HDR Processing. I'm going to browse. Now I got all my shots of Baltimore Harbor and Inner Harbor and Nighttime Skyline. I'm going to go all the way down here past the barns to the nine shots I used on the tripod. I'm going to open them up. I'm given this dialogue. I accept it. Uh, let's see here. So am I going to do anything special here? No, not really. I'm just going to pretty much accept the default settings. Go over here and hit OK. And this is going to crank away for about a minute or so. So you and I have got some time to catch up and kind of get to know each other. So. Let's try some of the small talk, as in, wow, I wish my computer had more speed and power so I didn't have to do this. We could, I don't know, talk about something else, maybe the weather, wherever you're from. I know from here it's pretty cold, but then again, I'm in California and anything under 60 degrees is cold. Boy, this is taking a long time. And not that I'm a broadcast major or anything, but I know that Nothing worse than radio and TV than dead space and dead air. So I'm just going to continue to talk, and hopefully I can maintain my audience by providing a consistent flow of intelligent, intelligent, yeah, intelligent talk. Hey, finally we've got something. I can shut up. All right, so we've got the initial draft here. That's what the HDR processing does. Now, we don't have a whole lot of detail here in the upper area in the sky, that's why we go over here and we click on Tone Mapping. So the Tone Mapping, now we finally get to kind of see a little bit of a little bit of detail as it's something I would probably get. So this is straight out of the computer, straight out of the camera. I haven't really done anything yet. That's what the software does. So as you can see some of the settings, for those of us that have used this before, so I can use my zoom tool here. So as you can see, my strength is 100, my color saturation is 100. Now my light smoothing, that's this button here. I try to keep that on the on this setting here, the fourth or the fifth setting. You'll see the difference. If I hit that fifth setting, it changes it a little bit. Now, I don't want to be one of those ridiculous people that does this. To me, that's not any good. That's a little bit better. Still too much halos for me, so I click the fourth one. And I think that's probably what I'm going to go with. Now back down here, if you can see it. So I've got 100% or 5% of my white point, my black point, and my gamma is around 1.15. My color, since it's already a cold, dark day, I keep my color at around negative 1. So it's not too hot. It's kind of in the middle. Now my saturation highlights, my saturation shadows, well, i got to keep those around 10 because I like lots of vivid natural colors. Uh, my micro, my micro contrast, I want to keep around 10. If I don't, you can kind of see what happens here. It's just not as vivid. It kind of looks like, well, something anyone else would shoot. So that micro contrast, I crank all the way up to 10, and you can kind of see it brings a little more contrast. My micro smoothing, I could go all the way down here, and that's just, a, again, a little too dramatic. In earlier shots, I would have really loved those uh, those clouds like that, but that's just a little too dramatic. So I'm going to get this slider bar, and I put it up to about halfway is 15, maybe about 19. I think that's still pretty dramatic, don't you think? Boy, I hate my voice, especially when I'm trying to be quiet, and I'm using my inside voice. S and H, I'm guessing that means shipping and handling. Um, highlight smoothing, shadow smoothing, shadows clipping. I don't want any of those. I have them all zeroed. If I do, and my highlights are smoothed, well, then I don't get a dramatic look. You can see the car 
does not look dramatic at all. I don't like that. So let's, it's at 100%. Let's take it back down to zero, and I think you'll, you'll see what I mean. See all that drama? There we go. That's a lot better. At least according to me. All right, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and hit process. And so this is going to crank away here for, well, I wish I could say 10 seconds, but it'll probably take about a minute or so. Anything else to talk about? Small talk? How was your day at school? Or work? Or home? That's great. I'm glad to hear that. Hopefully things will get better. Okay, so there's my final product, right? I'm just going to go up here and go File, Save As, and we'll just call it POS underscore Ford. So at least I'll know where to find it. Not that I'm judging Fords at all. So I can get out of this. And now I'm going to go into Adobe Photoshop CS3. I've already started it up because we know how long it takes. I'm going to go to Open. And magically, it's already in my Baltimore directory. Not yet. Professional work, my pictures, Baltimore. Let's go down to the P's for POS. POS Ford is right here. Probably going to ask me what kind of uh, space I want to work with. I'll use my sRGB to space to work with. Okay, so here's my car to start with. Now, this one I don't really have a whole lot of anything to do. No real cloning, nothing else really dramatic I need to do. But I do want to kind of play around with it and get a little more uh, dramatic with the colors. As you can see kind of down here, down towards the bottom, it's a little bit light here, here, and kind of around there. So I'm going to use the burn tool to kind of even it out the exposure down on the bottom. Increase the size a little bit, up around uh, about 15%. I'm just going to slowly kind of darken that area, darken this area. And darken that area. If anything else, it should kind of even everything out, right? Make it a little smaller. Even it out back here. By the wheels. You know, nobody has to know the difference, right? It's just between me and you. Awesome. Okay, so now if you can really zoom in here and see, the grill is chrome, but it's not really that very bright. It's not very shiny. So I'm going to shine that up a little bit. I want to do, first thing I'm going to do is going to go over here and choose Dodge. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. So I'm going to, 2%, let's make it about 20. That's, I don't like that. I dodged about 10% here. And then I'm going to really try to bring up the, uh, the headlights and so I'm going to use an eye pop action here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom into the headlights right about here actually you know what I can do since the headlights and the chrome have the same effect of eyes I'm going to select this entire area as my first area to to zap. So I'm going to go all around this whole area with my magnetic brush or whatever this thing is called. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't want it to look too fake. Okay, so there's my first selection. I'm going to hit play again. I think you can see most of it, can't you? Push this back a little bit so you can. Okay, so my sex selection I'm going to use is this tire over here. I'm going to brighten that up. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. If not, I'm just wasting a lot of breath and your time and mine. And our time is very valuable. So as you can see, instantly it's kind of brightening them up. I'm just going to kind of leave them as is. I like nice glossy chrome. I think you do too. So let's zoom back out to see where we're at. Like that. Looks pretty good.